Hey guys, what is going on and welcome back to another video here on the channel. Now in today's video, we're gonna be talking about KV of a brushless motor and how it may not actually represent what we all know it to be. Now before we dive into the content for today's video, I did wanna point out that a lot of you that are watching this video right now are not actually subscribed to the channel. And I wanted to mention that you don't need to wait until the very end of this video to hit that subscribe button if you like the content and you wanna see more of it. Let's first start off by talking about what KV actually represents as we know it. KV of a brushless motor is simply the amount of mechanical output that we get from the motor shaft in terms of revolutions per minute. And the amount of revolutions we get for every minute is based on the amount of input voltage that we apply to this. So essentially what we're doing is we're saying that we apply an electrical input to the motor and we get a mechanical output from the motor. One is in terms of volts as the input and then our output is going to be in terms of revolutions per minute. Now where things get interesting is how we actually measure and define KV. Let's take a quick review and see exactly how we measure the KV of a brushless motor. Okay guys, so here we go. We're gonna talk about how to measure the KV of a brushless motor. Now to do that, you need a few components. The first component that you need is your multimeter. Your multimeter has to be capable of measuring frequency as well as AC voltage. As long as your multimeter is able to do that and it is sensitive enough to pick up the actual measurements, then you're good to go. The next component that you need is a drill. Now I've selected this drill as it's the one that I commonly use. And one of the big reasons I select this drill is because it uses a lithium ion battery. A lithium ion battery just allows me to get more accurate results as that battery is going to allow this motor to rotate at more of a constant speed as I take both measurements. If you happen to have two multimeters, then this step is not as important. But what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna take one measurement and then I'm gonna stop that and then I'm gonna switch the setting on the multimeter and then take another measurement. Because of that change in our process where we're actually gonna stop the motor and then continue again, that's why I want to use that consistent setup where I know I'm gonna get repeatable RPM values. So let's go ahead and show you exactly how we have this set up. What I do is I take my multimeter using the correct inputs to the multimeter in order to measure frequency. Then I connect that to one phase on our brushless motor, which essentially means selecting two of the wires and placing the leads onto those. Then the next step that we take is we take our drill and we secure the chuck right onto the shaft of our motor. What this is gonna be able to do is allow us to spin that motor up at the speed of our drill. I'm going to be using the high gear setting in the drill. I want the most RPM as possible. Around 1300 or more would be ideal. The faster you can spin, the motor up, the better it is going to be for you. And the last item, most obviously, is going to be our motor. I've selected this motor, it's got a relatively low KV, and you have to know how many magnets are inside of here. So essentially you need to know the pull count of your motor. So let's go ahead, we already have the setting on our multimeter selected to frequency. The next step is now simply just spinning up the motor, holding it at constant speed until everything settles on the multimeter and taking that measurement. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna spin it up full speed. So there we go, we have our measurement. Now the next thing I need to do is simply just swap the dial over here to AC voltage, and we're gonna repeat the process and take the measurement of voltage. And then the last thing that we do, once we have both of those two readings, is we take this data and we go and put it onto the form that allows us to calculate the KV of this motor. That's how simple it is to measure the KV of a brushless motor. Now that you know exactly how the KV of a brushless motor is measured, you can see that we actually don't apply a specific voltage using a lithium polymer battery pack and then measure the amount of RPM that we get out of that motor. It's actually quite the opposite. What we do is we first spin up the motor mechanically, putting that mechanical input in terms of shaft RPM, and then we measure the amount of voltage that we get at the leads. Now what's really interesting about this is 
is that voltage that we're measuring is based on what we know as back EMF. And this is the voltage that the motor is producing, just like it were to act as a generator. Now this raises a bunch of different questions. The first one being, can you actually measure back EMF and then use this information to represent the actual amount of mechanical output that you get out of the motor? And then the second question being, does KV actually represent the amount of mechanical output that we get out of our brushless motor? Now, in order to understand this further, we have to dig into a motor constant that we've never talked about on the channel yet. And that is going to be represented as the back EMF constant, or also known as the voltage constant. Now, this constant is quite important because what it represents is the constant used if you want to know the amount of back EMF that is produced from your brushless motor. Now, what you do to get that motor constant is you spin it up just like you did with the KV example that we used earlier, and you measure the amount of voltage that you get at the three leads. Interesting enough, this sounds awfully familiar, doesn't it? Well, it might actually be awfully familiar. Let's talk about the other motor constant that we have. The second one that you may have actually heard of is known as the KT value. Now, the KT value represents the constant for motor torque. It's the torque constant of our brushless motor. This one is quite important. Unlike the back EMF or voltage, voltage constant, the KT value represents the constant for the amount of mechanical output that we get out of a brushless motor. And that mechanical output of, is, of course, torque. So the way this works is that you want to find the amount of torque output that you get from your brushless motor. And let's use this motor as a specific example. And let's say, I don't know, it has a thousand rating for a KV value. What we do is we take one divided by that KV value, which is a thousand, then you convert the unit so that it matches with your SI base units, and that is going to represent how much torque output that you get for every amp of current that you're pulling with this motor. With that being said, we are now able to understand the amount of torque output that we get from that brushless motor in order to use for any type of calculation where we need to have a motor to fulfill a certain task or job. Now let's talk about our next value that is representing a constant and that is our KV value. So what does KV actually represent? And is KV a good value to use as an output? Well, let's start off by first stating, we've never actually stated this on the channel before, but KV actually represents the velocity constant. That velocity constant has the units that we described here on the channel before as RPM per volt. What's very interesting is that the KV, which is representing your velocity constant, as well as the back EMF or voltage constant, as well as also the KT value being your torque constant, are all extremely closely related. Essentially, they're all the same value if you really break it down and take a look at it. Now, the $100 question for this video is, does KV actually represent the amount of mechanical output RPM that we get out of the motor for every volt of input that we apply? And the very quick, easy answer for us today is, absolutely it does. If we wanna know the amount of output that we get, we use the velocity constant. If we're not interested in the mechanical output that we want for this motor, then we would use the back EMF and you would see that relationship in the opposite direction. Keep in mind that the back EMF constant as well as the KV value are essentially the same thing. In fact, they were both set up so that you can apply the actual input value to both of these constants in order to get the actual output value that you're looking for. So just like the torque constant tells us some mechanical property that we get out of the motor, the velocity constant tells us yet another mechanical property that we get out of our brushless motor. Applying a mechanical input to the motor and then measuring the back EMF produced right at the motor leads just happens to be the standard that has been set in order to define that KV value. Now a couple points to make here so that there is no confusion. The KV value of a motor is the RPM per volt applied and it is at zero load. 
when you do not apply a load. The second point is, as you begin to apply a load to that motor, that KV value is actually going to change. The more you load it, the more that KV value is gonna start to sag and drop. Well guys, that pretty well sums it up for this video. I hope you now have a good understanding as to what the KV value represents as well as this KE value, which is known as our back EMF constant. As always, like the video if you do, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that I can see you in that next video. Thanks a ton for watching these videos. I certainly appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next one on Monday.